Welcome to 15 Minute Mom Kitchen. I am very excited to welcome you to my kitchen and explain a little bit about the myths of dieting. Today's masterclass is fasting yourself out of fast foods. And when I say fast foods, I also mean processed foods. So I'm Kripa, my kitchen is vegan and vegetarian, and I like to cook super quick in 15 minutes because as a busy parent living in a busy household, I want to give my family the best nourishing meals yet in record time. So join me today for this masterclass while I make myself some organic decaf coffee, black, because I'm still in my fast. Like I mentioned, today's masterclass is all about fasting our way out from fast foods, especially processed foods, and learning more about our body and the benefits of eating real foods and fasting. Now, fasting has been around for centuries uh, and in lots of different cultures, uh, especially in our Indian culture, and the benefits that our ancestors have um, claimed from fasting are actually now becoming research. And there's a lot of clinical studies proving the benefits of fasting. So when I talk about fasting, you may have heard of lots of different ways of fasting. Yes, there are various ways that people have found that work for their bodies. And this is important to understand that you need to always listen to your body. Our bodies are magnificent in communicating with us their needs, what we're, what we're lacking, the nutrients that we're lacking, and they manifest in different ways. So knowledge is definitely power. And you may have heard of the 5-2 diet or the 24-hour fasting or 72, 48, 16, 8. I will go through a couple of them, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about, from my experience, what works for me. Now, I do uh, do a lot of research in this field because I'm fascinated, and according to the research that I have done today, I'm going to share with you um, what doctors and functional, functional medicine say at the moment, what clinical research is saying at the moment, and what has been seen till date in human beings. But before we even dive into how to fast, I want to explain to you today in this masterclass the benefits of fasting and why should we fast. Post-industrial revolution, even in countries like India, is hard to find raw natural foods like salad. This is because we are inundated by processed foods, easily accessible packaged foods, all manipulated in laboratory. Now, when I talk about processed foods, we are talking about foods that have labels. By rule of thumb, anything with a label is processed. Anything without a label, will you ever find a label on an apple or an orange? No, because they have not been processed. They haven't gone through a industrial manipulation or factory manipulation, produced, mass produced, all of those things that are added, there are no additives, there are no emulsifiers. So all the chemicals that are added to preserve food, to be able to package food, make it last, it all means that that food had to go through some form of processing. And why is processed food so bad? Well, there is a lot of research now going into gut and the gut microbiome and how our bacteria react towards these foods that are not quite digestible by our body, not digestible by human enzymes, but there's a whole different masterclass on gut that I have produced, so make sure you watch that too. The problem here is, although we all know that processed foods aren't really good for us, we don't really know why, but also it's very difficult to live this day and age without going out, socializing, eating outside food, uh, picking up some packaged food because we are on the go, running around. It's really difficult to meal plan, but this is why my 15 minute recipes are brilliant. They are vegan and vegetarian, so make sure you look them up. But let's put that aside for a second and let's think about how we can balance things Let's talk a little bit about our circadian rhythm. Now, what is a circadian rhythm? It is basically, if I were to put it simplistically, is not eating during dark hours and eating during light hours. Now, back in the day, our ancestors had no fridges, no electricity, so this is how people used to eat. And that is the natural way that our body, our body clock, our circadian clock 
is tuned to do. This is where we wake up, we see the daylight and our brain triggers, uh, sends messages to our body that it is time to fuel up. This is how it works. And at nighttime, we have other hormones like melatonin that are gonna send signals to our body saying, shut down time, sleep time. It's incredible how our body works. Melatonin, our sleep hormone, not only tells our brain to prepare for sleep, also tells our pancreas to stop producing insulin and digestive enzymes. Two to three hours before bed, your, your body has a signal to shut it down metabolically. So if you're eating tons of food at that time, then chances, chances are you get metabolic disease, insulin resistance, obesity, weight gain, dysregulation, reflux, and poor sleep. Our internal clocks need the daylight to turn on all those brain processes and metabolic processes. It's a signal to our internal circadian clocks. This is what I mean by circadian rhythm. Repair and renewal processes happen in the night. We all know while we sleep, we build memories, but we also repair and renew ourselves. Well, intermittent fasting may also improve insulin sensitivity, which can decrease inflammation, making you feel less swollen and puffy and positive effects on the gut. According to a 2017 review in Annual Review of Nutrition, fasting can also help restore a healthy circadian rhythm, which has positive effects on your gut health, your metabolism, and your sleep patterns. Now, this is all linked to having good energy, which is what we all want, energy. The diet culture is huge. There are so many diets out there and we all want to feel good, feel lean, feel healthy and feel energetic. This is why a lot of us resort to quick fixes and diets that we believe or are told and marketed in such a way that make us believe that we are going to get leaner, healthier and more energetic. However, there is a caveat. Diets can work short term, but long term they are not great and the long term effects of these diets are yet to be um, researched but everything indicates that they are not good for our gut. The minute we deprive our gut microbes, our good bacteria in our gut of fiber, which is one of the big things that lacks in these diets like the keto diet which is high in fat or the um, Atkin diet high in protein, so you are cutting down some food groups somewhere along the line to make sure that you're in that calorie deficit. I agree that to become lean and to lose weight, you do need to be in a calorie deficit, but there are different tools and different ways of doing them. And intermittent fasting is a brilliant tool that actually does benefit your health. This is not just my opinion. Thousands of my followers that are following the intermittent fasting lifestyle, yes, it's a lifestyle, have all benefited from this. So I'm not here to preach you a culture of intermittent fasting, but I am here to tell you today of its benefits and how so many people have seen differences in their, in their bodies, in their well-being, their sleep, their mood, their energy, and their inflammation. Inflammation, a big word here. It is no surprise that lots of doctors, medics, nutritionists, and fans of functional medicine do follow intermittent fasting or recommend it to their patients as a tool, as a diet, as a lifestyle, because there are very well-researched benefits to fasting, to intermittent fasting. A lot of these studies have been conducted on mice, on animals, but there is more and more research in this field that indicates that intermittent fasting is definitely beneficial to the human being. Some may argue that fasting is difficult, but remember, we are not restricting what you eat, we are restricting when you eat. It is a time-restricting culture, a time-restricting diet. So while hunger tends to diminish as your body gets used to fasting, it can be a problem in the beginning stages because sometimes hunger can lead to overeating the wrong types of food during your feeding window. So it is extremely important to stick to good food. Whole foods, healthy fats, oils, lots of fiber rich veggies. I call them the fuel four. The fuel four are protein, carbohydrates in terms of your greens, your leafy greens full of phytonutrients, very good for inflammation as well, super antioxidant. You want to have lots of 
fiber. Fiber is a big one because it feeds your gut bacteria. We have a whole gut masterclass, to, so do watch out for that one. So how do you fast? Well, I'm gonna to talk to you about my 16-8 way of fasting. I stop eating at 6 p.m. and I begin eating again at 10 a.m. But I let this vary depending on what my social life is or what my circumstances are. I'm not rigid to the point that it has to be this way. I often recommend when you're a starter or a beginner to intermittent fasting, try and fast 12 hours. Keep your body free from food for 12 hours. And that's not difficult if you stop eating at seven, p.m. and begin eating at 7 a.m. That is through the night. Those are your 12 hours of fasting. During your eating period, of course, it's very beneficial to eat healthy foods, but an occasional piece of dark chocolate or something that you really, really crave eating is okay. You mustn't be too hard on yourself and you must make sure that there is balance. During your fasting hours, you can consume beverages that are zero calories, for example, black coffee, uh, tea that is sugar-free, herbal teas, water, warm water, water with lemon, water with cinnamon or turmeric, all these are zero calories. So what can you have during your fast period? During the times when you're not eating, water and zero calorie beverages such as black coffee and tea are great. And during your eating periods, Eating normally without going too crazy is probably what I would recommend to keep that diversity and keep your gut healthy. Dr. Madsen says that after hours without food, the body exhausts its sugar stores and starts burning fat. This is why intermittent fasting is a great tool. He refers this to as a metabolic switch. Intermittent fasting works by prolonging the period when your body has burned through the calories consumed during your last meal and begins burning fat. For this, it takes time. Your body needs time. So longer periods without food, such as 24 hours, 36, 48, and 72 hour fasting periods are not necessarily better for you and may be dangerous for some, but going the night without eating and making sure that we are not uh, we are giving our body that time to digest the food properly, to do its metabolic processes, to conduct all the enzyme processes that it needs. Now, if you are going to fill yourself with junk food and supersized fries and pizza during your eating periods, then of course you are not going to benefit from the intermittent fasting. Fasting is evolutionary, embedded within our physiology. Many of the benefits of intermittent fasting are related to these changes in hormones, the function of cells and gene expression. When you fast, insulin levels drop and human growth hormone, HGH, increases. Your cells also initiate important cellular repair processes and change with genes they express. Intermittent fasting makes intuitive sense. The food we eat is broken down by enzymes in our gut and eventually ends up as molecules in our bloodstream. Carbohydrates, particularly sugars and refined grains, think white flours and rice, are quickly broken down into sugar, which our cells use for energy. If our cells don't use it all, we store it in our fat cells as well. But sugar can only enter our cells with insulin, which is a hormone made in the pancreas. Insulin brings sugar into the fat cells and keeps it there. Between meals, as long as we don't snack, our insulin levels will go down and our fat cells can then release their stored sugar to be used as energy. We lose weight if we let our insulin levels go down. The entire idea of intermittent fasting is to allow the insulin levels to go down far enough and for long enough that we burn off our fat. So here are my tips to make sure that you can eat healthy and avoid the foods, processed foods, and fast yourself out to fasting. Avoid sugars and refined grains. Instead, eat fruits, vegetables, beans, lentils, whole grains, proteins, healthy fats, plant-based food, like a Mediterranean diet. Let your body burn fat between meals. Don't snack. Be active throughout your day. Build muscle tone. Consider a simple form of intermittent fasting to start off. Limit the hours of the day when you eat. Don't eat too late in the night. Leave at least two to three hours of an empty stomach before you go to sleep. Avoid snacking or eating at nighttime all the time. Snacking isn't that great for us. Sometimes intermittent fasting doesn't work. 
It's all about getting your body to switch over from glucose metabolism to ketone metabolism. So our usual three meals a day provide our body the constant source of fuel that we need. We don't need those snacks in between. We need to give our body time to conduct digestion and all its metabolic functions. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Kripa. I create vegan and vegetarian recipes for the busy household, always taking account your health and well-being. So join me on 15minutemom.com or on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok to learn how to cook the 15-minute way.